upon the breakout, gold's going to make a new all-time highs. Gold-backed ETFs seen inflows of over five billion. Point eight trillion dollar gold market. Why are we the only guys to see on this Raise your heads, Ben. Hey, Kinesis community worldwide. This is Shane Moran. I'll be your host for live from the vault. I'm excited for today's. Uh, show we've got of course none other than Andy McGuire coming in from the UK uh, with a gold update on this turbulent turbulent week or this past week turbulent in the gold and silver market but Andy's going to break it down for us today and we also have a special guest you do not want to miss a CEO of a company that you'll recognize but we'll get to that later on in the show uh, for now hey I've got some news I've got my cool wallet I just uh uh, got it in here, set it up, and yes, this is not an optical illusion. It's actually, the wallet is actually the same feeling as a as a credit card. It's very, very thin, very simple. Instructions were very clear on how to set it up, and thank you so much, Kinesis, for this cool, cool wallet. All right, appreciate that. Get yours. If you don't get it now, get it right now uh, on the store at kinesis.money. And so with that, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce you to Andy McGuire coming in from the UK with Talking Gold. Over to you, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. In fact, I was going to defer providing a gold market update due to the illness forcing me to lock down. Yes, guys, I have a touch of the coronavirus. Um, and I think you're going to find that probably almost everybody is actually going to be touched by this at some point. But as you can see, I'm alive, I'm doing fine, and I don't think there's any reason for most people to worry. But anyway, I'm not feeling great, but given the action, I think it's important to shed a light on why we have witnessed such a deeply oversold condition to develop in gold and silver. It's really important to understand this. So look, cutting to the quick, over the last two webinars, we've been expressing concerns that because the central planner's focus has been on desperately propping up stocks. We talked about this a couple of times, but it was instead of buying new bonds to replace maturing paper. If you remember, we talked about it. Now, it would, if, if this was to continue, it would ultimately drain liquidity from the entire market, which in turn would ultimately burst the stock market bubble. The coronavirus just happened to be the catalyst for this inevitable conclusion. Now, over the last two weeks, we've evidenced the fastest, most disruptive stock market decline since 1929, bar none. This global market illiquidity event has since wiped out all stock market gains since December 2018 and could easily touch December 2016 if, there's, if, uh, if the Fed don't step in a little heavier now. Just drilling down a little more, the data tells us the Fed has been asleep at the wheel. It is the bond market that needs rescuing. And as we evidenced the first, we, we evidenced the first rescue attempt last Thursday. And again, if you remember, on Sunday night, just before the market opened, we saw the Fed announced what was on the face of it, seemed like a major stimulus package. But again, it's proved too little. What happened? We gapped down. So so as suspected, assisted by a tailwind of sell everything of value to meet margin calls, which is pretty much what we've been seeing, and extremely illiquid conditions where the bid ask spreads, which are normally incredibly tight, have widened in all markets. Now, now GC and SI are really just proxies for, uh, the, they're a non-deliverable proxy for, uh, for real gold and real silver. And it's important to differentiate that we're talking about GC and SI here, so gold and silver in that form. Uh, these represent, as I say, undeliverable positions, but we've seen three and six tick spreads. Now, I've never ever in all the years, not even through two, 2008, uh, through uh, any, of the, any of the periods of time, have we ever seen a spread that wide. The market makers, disappeared. No one wanted to make a market. And with market makers so reluctant to make the S&Ps, markets in the S&Ps, that's the most liquid global stock market. Uh, spreads this morning, as an example, widened to an unprecedented three to four ticks. That's up to a full dollar between the bid and the ask. That's incredible. This is 
This is a system that isn't functioning. In fact, liquidity is thinner than we witnessed in 2008, right into those lows. And it raises a red flag that fresh Fed action is required. And believe me, it will come. So none of the banks will be allowed to fail. That's a guarantee. So there's just too much to lose. Central planners will paint, print whatever it takes to really to prop up any form of default in the banks. In fact, uh, two days ago, we saw queues coming appearing outside of German banks. I mean, a possible bank run could not be tolerated. It would be vi talk about a virus. It would go viral, and that would be a crippling for, for the global economy. Um, so really, what are we saying? This is going to require trillions of QE and ultimately revalue gold well above $2,000 per ounce. Now, to sum it up, the Fed's attempt to add liquidity has not been about rescuing stocks. It is, in fact, about rescuing the $200 trillion US bond market from a total collapse. And it's a market, it's this market that is the anchor for close to $300 trillion worth of derivatives, get this, that have zero intrinsic value. value. They are worth less. So, I mean, let, let, uh, just, I mean, Bloomberg, let me see, I, I have something here from Bloomberg. Here, Bloomberg reported on Friday, this is the quote, the deepest bond market in the world is struggling with a lack of liquidity to a degree that veteran asset managers say they've never seen before, end quote. I mean, the illiquid bond market conditions have trapped primary dealers, placing them in the unprecedented position of being unable to raise cash in the largest, most liquid US treasury market. Now, the inability and this is, this is serious. The inability of a primary dealer to trade U.S. treasuries is unprecedented. The markets are broken. The mon this Monday morning, as stocks crashed and probably woke up to find it, stocks have crashed right into December 2018 lows. Bonds evidenced another illiquidity event again. Primary dealers were unable to sell. This is what triggered selling in the only other market sufficient to raise instant cash. That means GC, the equivalent for, for gold, was sold, borrowed, and officially short sold in an attempt to provide liquidity. This is why we have witnessed such a deeply oversold condition. Now, to put a little context to this thing, Swiss refiner Horaeus have sold out of all physical gold and silver, and is now forced to close until further notice because of the coronavirus. Physical gold and silver are in massive demand and supply is extremely tight. On top of this, German Swiss gold dealers have been forced to close under regulations. Dealers are unable to provide delivery dates for gold or silver. All the short selling in paper gold will have to be bought back. And this is, this is something which really people have not really understood because you tend to think of it as just a paper market, a dot on a screen. It has an actual, there's an intrinsic product with intrinsic value under all of these paper trades. Now, bottom line, this is a liquidity crisis, the scale of which has never been witnessed before. This is not a drama, it's a fact. This is a direct Head, uh, bailout of hedge funds on the brink of collapse, and even more significant, a bailout of banks. And I would even go as far as to say, ultimately, the American states. Now, bottom line, in their attempt to tap into the only other source of liquidity, the plunge protection team, and we've done this, we talked about this in, in previous uh, uh, webinars has simply borrowed hundreds of tons of undeliverable gold and in doing so has pushed the short cover envelope to the absolute limit. Short term volatility aside, gold and silver will rally strongly in these conditions. This may wait until the Fed acts further, but that's gonna be pretty soon given the, the nature of the volatility in the S&Ps that we've seen today. Limit down, limit up, limit down, it, it is, even, even after all of this stimulus, so-called stimulus, these markets are so illiquid. So given, and, and bear in mind that gold and silver 
are deeply backwardated. And it's important to understand how backwardation works. And essentially what we're saying is, is that a future uh, contract is actually trading at a discount to the cash market. So obviously silver has been a huge issue. Someone large has also linked the SI, we call it SI as you say, this the derivative version of silver into the S&P, it's an algo. We've seen it in gold, GC and ES. This is SI and ES, wasn't there before. As a consequence, silver reached seriously oversold backwardated conditions uh, with predatory swap dealers now fully net long. They've been making hay. I mean, we had, a, uh, the, we had the ratio trade moving up to 117 to one. It's a no brainer, of course. And we know that uh, Goldman Sachs is long. We know that uh, JP Morden's long silver. Um, and just for reference, the, the, the SI sweet spot, OPEX sweet spot, and that is the COMEX OPEX sweet spot for silver, is actually $18 for expiry in just two weeks. Gold has a sweet spot just above 1600. I mean, so look at the charts, look at where we are, and look at where these, the, these guys have actually placed their bets. So here we're evidencing the Fed's plumbing coming apart. The only solution is to force large volumes of electronic cash priced at zero, get this, to minus 25% into leaking pipes. The cost to carry investment gold, we've never seen this before in US dollar terms, the cost to carry investment gold and silver now favors gold above cash. Based upon this unprecedented metric, gold now exceeds the Goldman Sachs $1,850 target by at least 200 bucks. And silver's cheap at 50 bucks. Guys, the banking system is broken. It's that simple. So really, it's the Kinesis physically backed gold and silver monetary system that is actually your solution. It's our solution. This is the one-to-one. -one. We know we talk about this, but this is it's so important to understand this is not a derivative of gold or silver. This is one-to-one -one gold and silver backed uh, currency within the Canadian monetary system. And it right now, could you have a stronger tailwind behind it? This is going to benefit us, us all. So if you're not already on board, really what I'm saying to you, this could not be a better time for you to join us. And thanks for bearing with this very, very sick guy. Thank you so much for that update, Mr. Andy McGuire. And we certainly all do appreciate, and I'm speaking on behalf of the entire uh, Kinesis global community, thank you uh, for the update, despite the fact that you're feeling a little under the weather. Uh, we really do appreciate that update. It's been such a big week in gold and a huge week in silver and very, very important to the Kinesis community. So thank you, Andy McGuire. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our special guest, I'm fired up, I'm excited to introduce you. He is the founder and CEO of a company that some of you may recognize called Shockwork Inks, where he developed over 100 digital platforms for some of the world's largest brands, uh, entertainers, sports teams, clubs, players, broadcasters, including uh, some of the hundred, I'm not going to go through all hundred, but the Colombian National Soccer Association, uh, that's Shockworks work, uh, FC Barcelona, La Liga. He's also, of course, uh, worked with Fox Sports, HBO, the UK and Panamanian governments. Uh, you know, they, they have over 200 full-time employees and over 30 portfolio companies. And one more thing is Alejandro La Plana advised the Venezuelan Congress on their IP strategy uh, moving forward. So I'm, I'm fired up, I'm excited, and it is my pleasure and honor to introduce you to the CEO of Shockworks Inc., Mr. Alejandro La Plana. Welcome to the call, Alejandro. Thank you so much, Shane. It's an absolute pleasure to be here connecting with the community. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're excited to have you here. Um, let's start off uh, with, a, with a quick question. Maybe you, you, as an entrepreneur, maybe take us back a little bit and talk about uh, how did you become an entrepreneur and maybe tell us a little bit about that story for our members. Sure, absolutely. So I, I grew up in uh, Venezuela and Caracas, and I moved around for, for, you know, a good chunk of my adolescence. Then um, you know, I got exposed to different um, monetary systems, 
uh, the way the world kind of works in underdeveloped markets, then moved to the States, which was a very developed market and started off in um, areas in, in investments, right? So I started off, you know, very kind of vanilla working for a multifamily office. Then um, after that, I kind of got a hang of how uh, technology could transfer over to the Americas. Did that for a while, got involved in an IP fund and found that our bottleneck was always um, product. You know, many times developers were a lot more focused on squeezing out fees, right? As opposed to really generating value for the companies that they worked with. So what I did was I inverted that model, made it more partnership driven, founded Shockworks, started off as a team of 20, grew about um, 200X year on year. We now have a team of over 200 people. Um, and, are, and we're involved in some very interesting products, but all from the vantage point of partnership, which is what allowed us to now have over 300 venture, uh, a portfolio of 300 uh, of three of 30 ventures. That's massive. That's huge. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations. Um, talk about maybe a little bit about your education and your early business ventures and how uh, it led up to uh, Shockworks. Absolutely. So, um, you know, my education, I went to, uh, I was working throughout the university, so it wasn't the traditional college experience. I, I went to upstate New York at Syracuse University and then did my MBA at um, NYU. But uh, throughout the entire time, again, I was focused on different companies. So, like I mentioned previously, I started off in tech transfer. So bringing um, Wi-Fi, WiMAX technologies to the Andes region in the Americas then moved to New York, um, founded an, a patent fund, and kind of inverted the patent world. What we did was we started uh, detrollifying a lot of the big patent trolls. So we were um, getting them to produce companies as opposed to suing entrepreneurs. And uh, the, the real bottleneck we encountered there was, was product again. And uh, you know, before I knew it, I was laden with a bunch of portfolio companies, about five or seven that were crucial. And I really didn't have a technical team to operate and operate them because I, I booted out the European partners, you know, in this case, the ones that were involved in product. After that, you know, I found that I, I moved back to South America, built out a team organically, again, grounded on partnership. And with that, you know, it's been, it's been off to the races. So we really just started making a name for ourselves in um, sports and entertainers. We play, we work with some of the world's largest brands, pubs players, broadcasters, and leagues and sports, particularly in uh, football, so soccer in uh, American terms. And um, yeah, no, we found, uh, we basically found a way to revolutionize how they monetize their digital fan bases. So we took those learnings, applied them to different industries, and uh, you know, from there got involved with very interesting projects. Well, wow, that's awesome, that's awesome. Now. now Tell us the story of how you connected with Tom and how you got involved with Kinesis and maybe your first impression, even when you first found out about Kinesis and this monetary system. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I actually met Tom through Serge. It was a funny story because um, typically I'm in Miami and Sergio's in New York. In this case, the tables are turned. Actually, Sergio was in New York, uh, sorry, in Miami with, uh, with Tom. And I was in New York at that point in time. So he calls me immediately and he's like, you know, drop what you're doing. You need to come down to Miami immediately. I have someone you need to meet. I'm like, okay, are you sure, Sergio? And then he's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. So, uh, you know, I take the first flight down to Miami, which is so for me, so it wasn't terrible. And, uh, you know, I meet uh, Tom. And my first impression is that I was very, like at first I was slight, slightly taken aback by the sheer scope of the vision. But the more I interacted with Tom, the more I realized that uh, the ambition was not unfounded, right? There's genuine passion, there's genuine thought. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of the heavy lifting and moving parts have been done to really figure out how you can create a, a project as ambitious as Kinesis. So, you know, by the second meeting, I was virtually sold. And, you know, he decided to, to partner up and um, and yeah, again, inverting the traditional vendor client relationship and focusing really on partnership more than anything. Awesome, awesome. And, and Alejandro, tell us what, what excites you the most about working with Kinesis and about what's happening right now. 
So yeah, no, it's, it's incredibly exciting. I would say at a personal level, right. Beyond any real business considerations, I think that uh, it's, it's probably, it's, it's different because it's something I'm genuinely passionate about. So, I mean, every, everything I was doing building up to Kinesis was important, but with Kinesis, I, I see real impact and something meaningful that hits close to home as a Venezuelan national. Um, I've also traveled to and spent long periods of times in countries like Argentina, Colombia, and Ecuador. So I've dealt with hyperinflation in the case of Venezuela and, and in part Argentina, arguably. I've dealt with uh, inflation, very, very sudden inflation and devaluations in Colombia. And then, you know, I've, I've seen how um, Ecuador basically had to dollarize because of the total collapse of the super, right? Then, you know, I, I, I'm a tech entrepreneur, have always been an aficionado of, of the blockchain as, as a protocol, right? Like what it can build, not so much the, the, the crypto aspect of it, but more like what, what it can, the economies, uh, the decentralized economies that can differentiate. So, you know, I've seen that many people have tried to create um, and what, what could be like a, a monetary system that is efficient, that is an, a proper inflation hedge, you know, the IMF launched the SPDRs, um, Bitcoin came about, but it was just too volatile and inefficient. I think that with Kinesis, we can genuinely build a stable monetary system that can be used by, by millions, if not billions. So that's why I'm incredibly excited about Kinesis. Well, talking about excited, I think the entire uh, Kinesis community is excited about the Kinesis app, uh, just newly released and we're fired up. There's a a massive process uh, that goes through. I know for a user like myself, you know, I get the app, I start pushing uh, the buttons as, a, as an end user, but there's a lot of, I mean, especially because of the monetary system, you're building this app. Maybe talk, take us through some of, the, some of your journey with how did you get this, uh, uh, this app to where it is right now today? Yeah, absolutely. So it was a bit of a paradigmatic shift, right? Um, we wanted to get every stakeholder involved. So by that, I mean uh, management, IT, uh, marketing, and even the Kinesis community. I'd say most importantly, the Kinesis community. So um, what we did was we created a human-centered design approach and decided to battle test every release with uh, a beta process. And we were very fortunate to have to encounter a very engaged and I would say hardworking community that just gave us all kinds of feedback that we incorporated into the product for a successful release as a result. Awesome, awesome. Uh, and um, uh, what about the, 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 maybe talk about and maybe brag a little bit about your team and who's behind uh, the creation. I know it's, uh, again, I'm coming back to, you know, what, 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 when I got the app, I downloaded, it's easy for me, but I know there's so much uh, there's, there, it's not just a one person uh, behind this app. And maybe talk about uh, the team and how that thing was put together. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we have a, multi, a multidisciplinary team uh, comprised of designers, QAs, product managers, developers, community managers as well. So, um, you know, what, what, I, what I told Tom when we first engaged is that, you know, I want Shopworks to add value to every aspect of Kinesis in terms of product. So we're in, um, you know, back in the back end and the infrastructure, we're in the app, we're on the web products, we're, uh, we're actively serving the, the community and providing support. Um, and in many ways, we, we took this holistic approach into the app and other products where what we wanted to do was get the user's feedback, really get the user's feedback before we take anything to market. So again, a big thank you to the Kinesis community for, um, being uh, being absolutely, you know, engaged in this process. And it's taken it from, from I guess, the initial uh, beta uh, to the actual release. What was the, the time period in there between the time that you started uh, uh, offering it to the community to, to start doing the beta and the time it was released? So um, in, in many ways, I think the beta is an ongoing process. So we wanted to absorb as much feedback as possible. Uh, we were excited based on the engagement we were receiving to just produce releases on the beta level as quickly as possible. 
And once we felt confident that we could produce, um, that we can launch a product that uh, could add value directly to the Kinesis community and new users, that we were capable of onboarding new users and create an, extent, an, an intuitive user experience, that's when we decided to, to pull the trigger. And in that, uh, Jai and the marketing team were extremely helpful. Awesome, awesome. Now, talking about Jai, let's let maybe bring up, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the website, uh, I guess the brand new website and also the shop that's attached. Can you kind of give us some of the details involved with producing something like this for the community? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in this case, again, we've, we've been working very closely with uh, every department, particularly in this case with Jai and uh, the marketing team. We've had uh, web developers, um, mobile mobile app developers, all these teams kind of unified under Jai's leadership. And uh, with that, what we wanted to do was surprise the community with high impact, high quality products that inform the sense of what's to come, right? And this will all spill over into every product within uh, Kinesis. You know, everything from the KMS to third party integrations to customer support to the app, right? So there's uh, it's a commitment to, what, uh, to what's to come in this case. All right. Well, talking about uh, commitment on what's to come, let's talk about what can we expect maybe in the short term, meaning the next couple of months uh, with Kinesis and what you're, how uh, you're involved here. Perfect. Yeah. So um, in this case, what we're really targeting, so we, we had a, I would say a very busy Q1. We had a very, very busy time in, you know, I don't think I, I, I did a Christmas or New Year's, but we were focused on the beta and pushing things along. So now that we have a couple of releases ready for the community, now the focus is more on really building out proper user experience, right? On the KMS specifically with charting, right? And we also want to separate payments, right? The traditional retail functions from the more professional trading functionality, um, specifically on the app, right? Then there's continued improvement on support uh, functions, the addition of new crypto pairs in, in the immediate future, Bitcoin and Tether, but this will continue, um, performance and user experience improvements. And I think the most important part is consistent releases, right? Consistent releases that have been readily by beta tested by the community. I think that this year, or, or I know that this year, we'll see a dramatic point of inflection for for everything involving Kinesis's product. Wow, that's I know it's exciting. The and 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 uh, the more someone would look into Kinesis, the more mind-boggling this project is. After all, we're talking about a monetary system. We're not we're we're not just talking about an app. We're not just talking about, like you said, a crypto uh, currency. It's an entire uh, monetary system. And maybe give us your thoughts on uh, Kinesis and and uh, moving forward. Uh, what are you most excited about and what do you see in terms of a future uh, with Kinesis? So, okay, so I'll try, I'll try to say this without sounding hyperbolic, right? But I think <laughs> commercially and in terms of product, Kinesis will definitely cross the chasm. And what I mean by that is that everything that you're describing and that and everything that you described in you know, your previous sessions, what you're able to communicate so effectively to um, our broader audience it will start to materialize in the form of our product. You know, we'll, we'll, this year we'll see this all manifest and unfold in tangible products that people can actually use and uh, generate value, use rather intuitively and, uh, and really build habits around it, no? So what I, what I think is that Kinesis will become an era-defining fintech and blockchain venture, I have no doubt about it, that will slowly become involved and add value to most aspects of users' financial lives. I think now we have the technical wherewithal to produce to, to produce integrations and features at scale, right? To really add to our product suite and do it quickly. Um, another thing is that, um, and this kind of informs Sergio's conversation in, in your previous interviews, um, where we'll also be potentiating the integration of a broader ecosystem with partners like Sergio and even Shopworks. So Shopworks right now has 30 portfolio companies, mostly domiciled in the Americas with millions of users that we would love to integrate into the Kinesis ecosystem. So, you know, I see very, very big plans ahead and you know, I'm uh, honored to be a part of this uh, journey. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, any final thoughts to our uh, community members and people tuning in uh, to live from the vaults? Uh, what would let me ask you a question? What would you recommend? Uh, and how do you introduce uh, Kinesis to someone that has never heard of Kinesis? It, it, look, the way it typically the people that I encounter and interact with are, um, you know, people that suffer a lot of what Kinesis is addressing. So even as close to home as, as our employees, right? Uh, this will facilitate the mobility of, of a stable currency. You know, you no longer need to worry about dollarizing your life or, you know, dealing with hyperinflation and losing 50% of your purchasing power within 30 days, right? This is actually a revolutionary system that will allow you to use a stable coin without paying storage fees and being rewarded for spending it. I think it's brilliant. You know, I think you need to get on it ASAP. We're all on the same page there and uh, I'm fired up. I'm excited. Uh, Alejandro, for those that are just tuning in, look, you're listening to Alejandro La Plana and he is the CEO of Shockworks, a strategic partner with Kinesis and uh, doing an amazing job. I'm just in awe at the technology uh, coming out as this massive project unfolds. Uh, and, and I'm just uh, really fired up about the future and also the growth potential uh, uh, that, that, that is, uh, accessible, I guess, to the whole community. So, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day, uh, to, uh, you know, to come and visit with us and, and share your story and talk about, uh, the developments here at Kinesis. Thank you so much. It's, it's my pleasure, Shane. And thank you so much for being so effective and evangelizing the message of Kinesis. And I also want to give a shout out and a, and a, and a very deep, uh, thank you to the Kinesis community for all their support throughout this process. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye for now. All right, guys. Bye. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, and Kinesis community worldwide. That was the CEO and the founder of Shockworks, Mr. Alejandro La Plana. I know that the community was looking forward to meeting Alejandro. I know we're going to have him on again uh, in the future as we evolve and continue to develop the technology. And uh, with that, I just wanted to remind everyone, if you haven't already ordered your Kinesis Cool Wallet, it is so cool. I just got mine. I'm fired up. I'm just going through the instructions. Pretty simple. So far, so good. And so with that, um, just wanted to remind you, I have it. It's awesome. Uh, and Andy and uh, Debbie uh, McGuire were just wanted to send a quick message out, just letting you know the entire community community at Kinesis. Uh, we're behind you. We're with you. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. And we wish you both a speedy recovery. We thank you so much. So with that, everyone, I look forward to seeing you on next Live from the Vault uh, call and webinar. And um, one more thing, go to the new website, kinesis.money, kinesis.money, and check it out. Very, very simple. It's awesome. Thank you so much for all of the, for the entire marketing team at Kinesis for putting that awesome uh, system together. So with that, everyone, see you next time on Live from the Vault. Bye for now. Thank you.